It's locked. Hmm. Smell a suspect. You know, sus. A little sussy. Anyways, I think it's time for some serious confrontation. Get ready for some more Nancy Drew here on Travis J's Space. On you. <laughs> Enjoy! Howdy folks, welcome to Travi J's Space here on YouTube and welcome back to another fabulous fun-filled adventure with Nancy Drew and the curse, the curse, curse of Blackmore Manor. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you guys so much for being here today, for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, all of us coming together through the mutual love and deep admiration for everything and all things Nancy Drew. So, in the last episode, some crazy stuff went down. Crazy, shocking, scary nonsense. And we opened a few things too. So we've got some secret uh, passageways now opened up to us. Sorry, just one, just one secret passageway. But we keep hearing talks of another secret passageway. So, oh, there's a hair on there. Little, oh, there's another itty bitty hair. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying the, um, I don't know if you notice the difference, but I am trying the microphone out without the pop socket thing. Because I don't talk directly into it unless I'm, you know, unless we're debriefing or recapping like we are now. Then I'll focus my direction towards you. But usually when I'm playing, I'm facing this way. So I'm hoping it might pick up a clear audio. I keep seeing a lot of, um, uh, podcasters and when they don't use the pop socket I find you get so much more of a clear voice I don't know if that's true though I'm not sure um, the technicalities behind the difference between using a pop socket or not don't know how that works but I'm hoping this will be a little different and eventually actually I might lift the webcam and move it up there it's a little higher up oh We'll looking up there and you, maybe you can see more of my office that way <laughs> be kind of cool um but we do have a lot to do because uh, i have been informed by my favorite little clue crew member the only red wolf who has told me the meaning behind our easter egg we got from the chicken teeth clatter toy machine thing. <laughs> or a chicken toy after a while anyways um, yeah, she has let me know that, um, how to use the egg we got, not only that, but also the answer to our, uh, lingering task, Nancy's lingering task in her journal that we can never check off about search in Jane's room thoroughly. We have the answer. Thank you, Red Wolf. And that answer is we need to listen to Jane explain every. I mean, every Penvalin family member on that giant family tree genealogy booklet thing she's got. Yeah. And we know how old that family is, this family is. So it might take us a while. It might be a long episode. So on that note, you got your tea? I got my, oh, it's way back there today. That's not really safe, is it? I might knock that over. Oh, we're taking the coaster with us. <laughs> All right. Okay. It's there. Um, y'all like my y'all like my mug? Today has been canceled. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I work nonstop here at Travis J Space. All for you guys. Mwah. I love you so much. Oh, I'm gonna pitch to the cheek. Oh, pitchy, pitchy. Sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, we gotta get into this. There's so much to do. So, yes, on that note, like I said, you got your tea? Good. Well, that don't look like tea, but it's some kind of liquid. So, go at her. You're good. You got a blanket? Fabulous. You look cozy. 
and which is great because the next question is are you comfortable are you cozy and you look like you are so question answered answered sealed si signed sealed delivered all right well then on that note let's begin folks let's get our nancy drew on kids yeah let's jump right into it all right so let's take a look at some of this uh it looks like there are triangles on both sides of the partition yes yes we did see those we don't know about those yet though it might take a while we've done just about everything except take a really good look oh okay so we'll go do that first actually no we're in the bedroom let's check the easter egg to the phone first um use that to activate something and of course opening up all the comms in the great hall that's not gonna happen for a while because that seems like a really big crucial part to the story and i don't think we're there yet and i probably should start calling people too but first and foremost i'm very excited to test out this easter egg all right come here mr egg here we go Oh, it's Shorty Thurman, <laughs> Shorty Thurman from jail. <laughs> That's creepy. That's so creepy. That's so cool! Oh, thanks, Red Wolf! Mwah, I love you! That's <laughs> so cool! I, I feel like I very faintly remember that from my childhood, but I think I only ever did it like one time. That's so weird. It's opening a whole bank of old memories right now. I don't know how I feel about that. Shorty Thurmond. Oh, I forgot all about him and his and his creepy. <laughs> Y'all remember? <laughs> you question him. Or he starts talking about Dirk Valentine. And his mouth is agape. <laughs> if you guys haven't checked it already, I definitely recommend. I'm gonna start a new short films, Nancy Drew Short Films collection that I've been meaning to do for months now. It's been planning for months and I'm finally buckling down. I think I got about six of them out so far. Um, but there's one in particular that reminds me of or what I'm referencing to. Unless you've already watched the entire series of uh, Nancy Drew and The Secret of Shadow Ranch, then you already know. But I made a short film kind of focusing in on how both Shorty and Dave both like to go like this. <laughs> frozen i know it's an animation thing but i just take it so I, I i take it so extra you know what i'm saying i'm so extra you so extra oh yeah we had dog's eye you know it always upset <laughs> it's always a little pet peeve of mine when there's some extras lying about you know what i'm saying like i don't know i, I maybe it's just me i love to eat mm. i love a good meal and i just love to eat every like i eat every ounce even with pizza like the frozen pizzas which i'm obsessed with oh i cut it up into four it's all for me well done I, it says to put it in for 25 to 26 minutes or so i put it in for 37. Mm -hmm. i found out that's the perfect time to get a delicio pepperoni pizza at the perfect crunchy texture it's just perfect um however when you cut it's a little hard it's a little difficult i suggest going in and then back out in and then back out really hard and it cuts it without the cheese getting everywhere and of course you gotta let it settle so the cheese don't fall off with the pepperonis however when i eat that in bed now first of all i've learned to teach myself to eat very slow so i take little itty bitty bites so i can appreciate the whole meal and it takes me forever to eat anything that way which is great because my stomach i don't get cramps or bloating oh i eat too fast or you know feeling hungry 20 minutes later because i took a slow but I was going to say, to make this point, because we're talking about chicken pot pie right now. <laughs> we're stuck on chicken pot pie. But I was going to say, when I finish, while I'm eating, there's a lot of crumbs, right? Because it's crunchy, well done. So I take all the crumbs and I start sprinkling them on the pizza. Like, I don't want any mess on my plate when I'm done eating. I will eat every last ounce. 
uh, Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving. <laughs> there better be enough buns there for me to wipe up that gravy and mashed potatoes. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now you know how I eat pizza. And maybe you y'all should try, try cooking your delicio pizza that way. Hello! <laughs> Coming in to say hello! <laughs> Uh, let's talk to her first. There might be- Hi, Nancy. Oh, yeah. The guy with the gargoyle. Which Pendleton had his portrait painted with a gargoyle? Don't really know. Uh, but you know all- I should get going. Come back soon. That's really interesting. She doesn't know- <laughs> Oh, she knows all the Pendleton's, but not- Oh, but not the one with the portrait of the gargoyle. And no coat of arms. Really interesting. Okay, so this is a lot- of people y'all ready well thank you red wolf anyways though in the meantime i know this is a strenuous task and it has to be done because y'all know me being anal with the checklist i just want to check everything checked off but i'm like that with my work to do list too like if i don't get it checked off or i don't get to rip up one of these uh to-do lists or you know idea or tasks when i get to rip one of those up i am so happy so happy so let's just let's do a virtual version of that right now. So why don't we start with Randolph then? He's the first one. Tell me about Randolph. Randolph the Red, so named for his bright red hair, was considered a hero at the Battle of Poitiers. For his heroism, King Edward III awarded him with the lands in the region called Penvelin. That's how we got our name. Oh, okay, that's neat. Edward III. I know British royal history, but that's a little too far back out of my knowledge bank <laughs> odo that's an odd name yeah he isn't very exciting really like farming and cows his son milo is much more interesting ah i see okay odo's brother tell me about simon he lived from 1358 to 1412 no 1411 uh, we don't know ooh, very much you're about good him. we don't know very much about him. okay well, this is good so far. Some of them she knows nothing about. Who was Anor? <laughs> he was Odo's brother. I should pay attention, though. I think these ones, these individuals are like the main blood heirs, firstborn and stuff. So I think we really only need to focus on them, paying attention-wise. I mean, we have to click all of them, but oh, I'm getting hot. But we do need to... I just made a mess. We do... <laughs> I'm always making messes. Uh, we do need to focus on, though, the main... Oh, so nice. Um, the main line here. But I feel like as we click these, they're just going to be short responses. What did Guido do? Yeah. He made pizza. <laughs> no, uh, I'm joking, of course. Oh. <laughs> I don't know anything about him except that he died funny. in 1433 because he outlived all of his siblings. Wow. 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 Yeah, 56, 56, 7, 8, nine, or 6, 7. Jeez, yeah. Interesting. All right, who's Agatha? Who is Agatha? <laughs> she was a nun. I think she lived in Ireland. Oh, okay. This is a big family. Who was Marjorie? She died when she was a little girl. It was really sad. Oh, oh yeah, not even 10 years old. 8 years old. Aw, poor Marjorie. What about Jacobus? He died when he was like nine. Oh my word. Yeah, he really was. Eight and nine years old. I wonder if, well, there's so many diseases back then and, you know, so many like different uh, symptoms and ailment or symptoms and uh, sicknesses and such that people didn't know about, right? What about Milo? Yeah, Milo this is the inherited one. inherited not only his grandfather's red hair, but his military prowess. Milo was instrumental in the Siege of Khan and was awarded even more lands by Henry V. Oh, okay. That's the one she really liked. Okay, well, who's Cecilia? Then? What do you know about Cecilia? Cecilia? She married the Lord of Limerick and did a lot of needlework. <laughs> Limerick. She had a <laughs> ton of kids, too. Like, 20. Can you imagine? Oh! All right, next generation, and Hugo. Hugo. Um, he had a lot of kids, and his dates were 1401 to 1466. Oh, you're a good girl. What about Albert? Tell me about Albert. 
He was very mysterious, and the people of Blackmoor were afraid of him because he knew all these scientific things. No one knows much about him, though. Hmm. Well. Mystery Albert. Who was Robertus? He was a knight, but died in some kind of jousting tournament. Ooh. He was twins with Josephus. Oh, died at 30. Very sad. Oh, jo who was Joseph or er, Josephus? Yeah, they used a lot, a lot of Latin longer. names back then and weird spellings. He became like a priest or parson or something. Lived much longer than his twin brother. Who was Anisha? Anand. Anisha, I like that. Who was Jeanette? It's Jeanet. Jeanet. I think he wrote plays. Oh, he. Oh. I don't know. I forget. I thought that was a she. Alright, Lucia. Tell me about Lucia. Lucia. Isn't that a pretty name? It if is. I have a daughter, I'll name her that. Aww. Okay, she didn't tell us anything about her. Who was Adam? Uh, like he married Eve. Duh. <laughs> no kidding. I actually don't know anything about him. I think he was the son of Hugo, though, but I forget. Huh. Who was Joan? Is that misspelled? No, that's how they spelled it then. Oh! She got married to this duke somewhere in Flanders. All right. <laughs> you know your tea's hot and brewing when you get, when your cup is stuck to your coaster. You know what I'm saying? You go ahead and steep. <laughs> All right. Okay. This will bring us closer to the 20th century. Tell me about Edmund. He uh, was into uh, cows. Okay. He did a lot of breeding of cows and sheep and got some kind of award from the king. Oh. Huh. Cool. Who was Nicolina? She died when she was a baby. Um, I have many ancestors who died young, but Ethel said that Penvalins in general live a long time. Hmm. Yeah, because I think that's the third, uh, the third child under ten years old that's passed away. How sad. Tell me about Walter. Uh, he was born in 1448 or nine. I'm kind of bored doing this right now. Oh, no, no, don't get bored. Who was Marge? I forget. I think she was... Oh, I don't know. Oh, she's starting not to... F <laughs> she's getting disinterested. But we gotta go through this, Who girl. Who was Charles? Oh, oh, Charles was a famous judge and wrote very important books on law. Oh. But his boy, Garrett, drowned while he was really young. Oh, that's... It's really sad. Oh, here Tell he is. Tell me about Garrett. Yeah. Oh, he drowned on his 19th birthday. Oh. Interesting. Okay, I know this is a side note, but it just came in my brain. I think it's a really neat story. It's not. It's just very uh, similar to Garrett's story. But uh, where I grew up in a small town in, New in, in Ontario called Newcastle, um, my mom and I... So there was Newcastle, right? The town, blah, blah, blah. And it was right on King Street, which is a street that goes all the way from Kingston, which is near Ottawa, Ontario, and goes all the way down to the other end of Ontario. And back in the day, it was the main street, you know, like it was all dirt and cobblestones, but carriages and horse and buggy and all deliveries, everything went through King Street. So Newcastle was one of those um, opportunity towns. You know, you had uh, a judge that would come in and, and rule over court cases every now, a traveling judge. Um, and you had, you know, like little taverns and trading posts and everything else. It was a really interesting kind of booming market town at the time. And as time went on, it was, sorry, uh, scratch that last bit. <laughs> and then the other part of Newcastle, which they call the port of Newcastle, uh, is essentially as it sounds, was the port to get in Newcastle, where Newcastle was basically founded by uh, Samuel Wilmont, who came over from Toronto with his family and settled here. Um, now one of the families, I'm not sure if it's one of the original families that settled Newcastle, uh, or someone related to, so it'd be like, you know, someone that did have a lot of class and nobility in the town, but not quite, I see, I'm not, I'm unsure whether he was, this family was related to the mayor and all this stuff. Um, but there was a very, very, very old, old home. There's a lot of old homes in the part of Newcastle because... You know, that's where families were starting. There's a lot of farms at the time. Now it's got a big subdivision that keeps expanding. But anyways, <laughs> uh, and condos, they never stop. 
some lake view. <laughs> uh, but on the other side of the Port of Newcastle, there's a fork in the road. So to the right, you go to where there is now the subdivision, where I lived for a few years. Um, beautiful, beautiful. And the original location of the Samuel Wilmot house, which is not there anymore, but they have a beautiful Samuel Wil Wilmot Creek trail that goes all the way around. And, oh, it's gorgeous. I go, I've been going there for years with my dad since I was a kid. Um, anyways, on the other side of the fork on the road to the left, you go to old Port of Newcastle. And that's where you find this giant old scary mansion. And when I was a kid, it was always looked like it was abandoned. And me and my dad and his best friend, Daryl, they were family friends. Daryl Cook, the cooks. They were our family friends. And I hung out with his daughter, Abigail, who was three years younger than me. And we all used to go on bike rides together, right? So, and sometimes we'd bring Abby's older sister, Haley, or older brother, Malcolm, or all of them babysat me. So we were like a family. We were all like a weird kind of blended, loving little family. <laughs> uh, anyways. So we used to bike, we'd bike down to Port Newcastle and it was always a decision at that fork of the road. Do we go to the right? Do we go to the left? Uh, okay, let's go left. So we go to the left and every time we passed this house, we were just so interested and curious, right? And I was probably about eight or so. So Abby was still using the bike buddy. I don't know if you guys remember those, but you connect an additional wheel with a seat to your, the parent's bike and you could pedal with them and stuff. So she would be on that and, and, uh, We'd pull up to this and finally one day, I think we were with, we were with Haley, uh, Abby's older sister, and we decided to pull up to this house. I was the last one. I was behind everyone because I had a bad feeling. I've always been like uh, supernaturally connected and grounded, you know, like I've always connected with spirits and energies and oh my God, I didn't start the timer. I just remember that now. We've already, we're already recording for 20 minutes. So 40, let's do 40. 45 minutes sorry ah dang uh but anyways we get up to this house and we notice there's a gravestone in the front yard okay creepy as hell we looked at the windows abby's older sister had a lot more guts than any of us she went right into the little glass room along the side the conservatory type thing um, which was just lined with newspapers and dust and dirt and she walked right into the door and looked in the window and there was this old, old, old kitchen and all she could see was a light turned on over a real old wall phone. And as soon as she was looking in there, she said the phone started to ring and that's when she kind of backed up. So yeah, I don't think she got spooked at that point. But we had heard that there was death in that family, in that house, the history. So my mother went online. She was bored, living in a small town, you know, housewife, nothing to do. She went online. And she found the obituary for that gravestone. And it turned out to be a young boy who lived there, I think in the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, who on his 19th birthday, so now we're getting back to Garrett, full circle. Sorry, I, I tell big, long stories. I'm old school. I'm old school. I can't tell stories as quickly as meta universe, alpha generation, Gen Z kids want it to be told. I do details. I'm an old school storyteller. So anyways, this boy, since they live so close to the lake, right, Port Newcastle, on his 19th birthday, the family was celebrating the mom, the dad, and there was two sisters, etc. And he decides to wander off and go down to the lake, um, but he couldn't swim. Now, it's unsure whether he was drinking or not, or if there was any kind of ailments that um, kind of uh, kept him from thinking coherently but he went in for a swim anyways and i guess the family's are where is he where is he so they finally i think one of the family members says oh he went down to to the to the lake to go for a dip so the family rushes down there and i don't think i think either they found his body or they never found his body but they just assumed that he had drowned in the lake lake ontario that is so yeah very sad very very sad story but as soon as we clicked garrett and we heard he drowned at 19 it just it reminded me of that little story so side note over story time with travis is over let us carry on <laughs> excuse me where were we garrett jillian Who was jillian yeah. she married the duke of ballingsford but she stayed at blackmore to raise her son thomas who inherited the estate when his grandfather charles died Oh, okay, okay. Tell me about Thomas. Mm -hmm. He was Charles's grandson and wrote a lot of poetry. He oh. also had three wives, Catherine, Anne, and Mary, but not like at the same time. They died and he just remarried. 
very funny, just like Henry VIII, Catherine Anne, and what was the third one? Tell me about Thomas. He was Charles' and Mary. grandson and wrote a lot of poetry. Oh, wait. He also had three wives, Catherine, Anne, and Mary, but not like at the same time. Interesting. They died and he just remarried. I see the innuendo because Henry VIII married Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, and then had a daughter, Mary, <laughs> Queen Mary the <I>. First. <laughs> Very clever! I see you, her interactive. I see you. Who's James? <laughs> he never married, but one day, when he was very old, a baby was found at the doorstep to the manor. He took her in and raised her as his own. That was Eleanor. Oh. Interesting. Oh, wow. He lived to be 90? My, oh, my. And he died the same year that her adoptive father did. Interesting. Who was Elizabeth? Like the Queen of England? Oh, you mean <laughs> Elizabeth, my ancestor. It's weird that she's the only ancestor named Elizabeth, since it's such a popular name. Mm-hmm. I'd say what so. What did Francis do? He got into a big fight with his brother James and lived in France. Tell me about <laughs> Geoffrey. I'd rather not. I'm kind of bored. Wouldn't you rather <laughs> play a game? No, I'd rather check this off my to-do list, girl. So... Come on. <laughs> Can you tell me about George, the one born in 1566? <laughs> nah, he like lived and died. End of story. All right. <laughs> On to Eleanor. She's going to have a lot to say about Eleanor, I'm what sure. What can you tell me about Eleanor? Just that she was burned as a witch, but it wasn't true. And her father, James, died when he saw her die. Aww. And then the family fled to France. I don't want to talk about this. Oh, wow. She's very connected to Eleanor. She's always gets passionate or has a lot to say when it comes to Eleanor. But that's very sad that her, of course, her father, adoptive father, would die at the sight of that at 90 years old, watching your daughter burn at the stake? I'd probably drop dead too. God, that's sad. Okay, well then who's Edward? I'm curious. Who was Edward? He lived in France with his father, Le Comte de Roquefort. He was very interested in languages and translated books from Greek and Latin. So we're assuming that Eleanor is James's long lost daughter? Because he says, or sorry, Jane says that one day at an old age, this young girl, baby, was dropped off at his doors. No, because if he's 90, I'm sure he's not impregnating women at 88, young women at that, for that matter, unless they knew he was rich and wealthy and powerful. I don't know. But if Eleanor is not a Penvalin and was adopted in as a Penvalin, I'm wondering if Edward... Let's click Who that again. Who was Edward? <coughs> he lived in France with his father, Le Comte de Roquefort. He was very interested in languages and translated books from Greek and Latin. Because he was born after Eleanor. He could be a descendant of one of these peeps. Who was Virginie? Who knows? She was married to the Duke of Barrowbold and died in the Great Fire of London. Aww. 1666. Tell me about Francois. Okay. He was a dwarf and became a trusted uh -huh. confidant to Louis XIV. Little people often held positions of great esteem at that time. This is true. Uh, 1649 to... Yeah, true. It was a lot popular in the 1500s, though, too. We clicked Edward. Alright! Oh, I thought we are on the last page. Damn it! <laughs> Tell me about Corbin. Oh, uh, I don't know. He doesn't have a coat of arms in the Great Hall because he didn't live here. Wasn't even a British subject. That's all I know. Okay, so that's the man with the gargoyle and no coat of arms. I think. Maybe. Who was Frederic? He was a soldier for the French. He was killed in the War of Spanish Succession in July of 1702. Hmm. Hmm. Who was Helene? Can we stop soon? Helene married the Duke of Bouville and died in 1760. End of story. I don't mind if you keep it short and sweet, honey. What about Colin? I want this to oh, end this too. Is so, so cool. Oh. They say he was a spy for England, even though he lived in France. Isn't that so very? I'd like to be a spy. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Interesting. Spies in this family. And Philippe? He made a fortune in the New World and bought back most of the lands that were confiscated by Cromwell. Wow. That's a... Wow. That's very significant. Who was Teofil? He lived Damn. most of his life on the island of Mauritius and discovered like a million plant species. Oh, 
Oh, okay, so now we see the gardening starting here, the gardening, the green thumb starting in the family. Tell me about Brigitte, the one who was born in the 17th century. She was absolutely mad about cricket, the game, not oh, the insect. Yeah. She actually saw the first cricket match in 1744. Personally, wow. though, I can't stand the sport. How interesting. She lived and grew up to see cricket be begin and then fell in love with it. I love that. That's so cool. Who's Penelope? I don't know much about her except that she was very loved by practically everyone in England. And there were a million poems written about her. Oh. If I have a boyfriend, I'd never let him write a poem about me. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like George and his brother Henri died in the same year. What happened? They were lost at sea. I guess they traveled a lot to Canada, especially to Oak Island. Oh, Oak Island, do you say? Very interesting. I wonder if these names have significance to Oak Island. I've There's a show here in Canada on the History Channel called The Curse of Oak Island. My dad loves that show, loves, watches it religiously. For years now and I should ask him if Henri and George have any significance in that story because we all know Nancy Drew loves to throw the innuendos out there very interesting there's a lot of secrets to that island I don't know much about it but I'm sure if I mentioned this to my father he'd be like well wait a minute <laughs> it looks like George and his brother Henri oh. died in the same year they have the same collect what happened they were lost cool. at sea I guess they traveled a lot to Canada especially to Oak Island Who's probably where they got lost. Um, she got shipwrecked on this deserted island with a whole bunch of yahoos and they wrote a story about it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. So they got lost at sea and died. She got lost at sea and came back to tell the story. <laughs> Interesting. Tell me about Jean. Hello. It's pronounced John. He was killed by a boar on a hunting trip. They eat people's flesh, you know? No, I'm kidding. Oh. But he really did <laughs> get killed by a boar. <laughs> Serves him right oh. for some poor <clears throat> little animal. Alright, what about Tell Martha? Tell me about Martha. She was completely daft. <laughs> She'd wear really bizarre outfits, and she was one of the first women to ride on a steam train. Oh, okay. Bravo, Martha. I wonder, I'd like to see a photo of her. I'm sure we could find her portrait downstairs. I want to see what she looks like. Martha. I gotta what remember do you Martha. Know about John? He was an opera singer, just like my mom. Oh. He sang in some Mozart operas, I think. Ooh. Man, this this history is getting rich. Tell me about Brigitte, the one born in 1759. She never married and was bonkers for astronomy. She adopted her sister's son, Richard, who later got killed at Waterloo. Oh. Who was Peter? Mm. Let's see. He had a wooden leg and he was attacked by wolves once. That's all I remember. All right. Who was born in 1763? <laughs> that was Isabel. Good one, she Nancy. She wrote many letters about the French Revolution and actually saw Marat's dead body in the bathtub. Talk about gross. Wow. I like how Nancy worded that, though. Who was born in 1763? Really testing her here. Who I like was it. Jacques? <laughs> Don't laugh, but he invented the lawnmower bag in 1831. I oh, swear I'm totally not making this up. That's so cool. Okay, that's neat. It's just very Tell sensual these days. Tell me about Richard. He died in Waterloo fighting against Napoleon. So many big... <clears throat> a lot of people in this family have very significant, prestigious uh, lives. You know, they're so rich with accomplishments and and uh big milestones you know and moments in time not even just within the family but in the world you know like martha being the first one to ride a steam train engine or one of the first women uh being lost at sea at oak island george and henry and marianne being lost on some island to come back to tell the story and then someone in here well richard fighting for napoleon but somewhere up here there was something else significant too no, I can't remember. There's <laughs> too many names in this family. I really commend Jane for remembering every single family member. Well, almost every single one. Oh yeah, he's just, I don't know, lived a long life. Let's move on. <laughs> Some of them she couldn't care to talk about, but the fact that she knows all these family members, that is quite, this, this little girl is quite brilliant. Tell me quite about brilliant. Richard. He died in Waterloo fighting against Napoleon. Right. 
Tell me about Edward, the one from the 19th century. He was a big explorer and went all over the world. He wasn't very close with his son, who was also an explorer. They'd only see each other by chance in weird remote places like Samarkand and Walla Walla. <laughs> Interesting. Alright. So he lived to be... Nine. Ninety-five. Ninety-five years old. Who was Caroline? Caroline was a chemist and helped identify the element lanthanum. I'm not oh. sure what the element does. I think it's a heavy metal. Interesting. Okay, here we go. Who like, was the William who died so young? He was Edward's little brother. He named his son after him. Aww. And there's William. Alright, we're finally caught up to... Uh... Uh, blah, 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 to Jane's Park here, modern day, and we've already seen Obadiah. Thank you, Red Wolf. Always coming in with the good uh, pieces of uh, leads here. Good leads. That one has a good reference there to. Uh, go we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll play it again. <laughs> Unless you remember from the last episode. But uh, it's interesting now going back and going through all of how many other connections. Weird, like, hey, wait a minute, connections there are. I mean, this one's like Nancy directly connected to Nancy but some of these I'm like wait history wait Canada wait <laughs> but just again so prestigious and noteworthy you know it's incredible who was William he was an explorer just like his father he was kind of a whiner so I heard and died before his father three years before his father wow. were Cassandra and Hector twins uh-huh Cassandra was totally obsessed with lawn tennis and was one of the first people in England to oh, have a court installed at her home. Okay, Hector wow. was the first ball boy. <laughs> what did Whoa. Sophia do? She was a big collector of impressionist artwork, but most of it was destroyed in a fire. Oh, that's a shame. Tell me about Arthur. He lived in the Wild West in the Americas and was a bandit with El Diablo's gang. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what a family. Who was Cynthia? I don't know. I'm kind of tired right now. <laughs> Sorry, Cynthia. You get nothing. Wow. Catherine <laughs> sure lived for a long time. She oh, lived wow. the longest of any Penvelin. I hope I live that long, but not if I'm all, like, creaky and cranky. Well, what about her life? I want to know. 1850. Oh, 101 years old. Imagine the things you would see. Wow. All right. Tell me about Rose. <laughs> it's a real sad story. She and her granddaughter Rachel lived in France during the war and were killed. I'm sorry. Another reference. Is this another innuendo? There was the innuendo to Henry VIII, you know, and the wife. The references to the wife's name and the daughter's name, Catherine and Mary. Okay, what about this? Just just humor me here. Rose, Sophia, Arthur. What do those three names have in common? I'll give you about five seconds. Alright. Sophia. Picture it. Cecily, 1928. <laughs> oh, whoops. I just knocked my mic. Picture it. Cecily, 1928. <laughs> Sophia, so Patrillo from Golden Girls, and Rose Nyland from Golden Girls. Now Arthur, there was no, I don't think there was an Arthur in Golden Girls, but the actress who played, uh, oh my God, Rose, Blanche, Sophia. Uh, how am I forgetting the other? Uh, Dorothy. Dorothy Sporzniak, Sporzniak, something like that. Her actual actress name is B. Arthur. So we got B. Arthur, Sophia Petrillo, and Rose Nyland. Am I reading? Am I reading too deeply? Or is that an innuendo right there? I think that's hilarious if it is. Perfect place to do it though, because there's so many, uh, what do you call it? People to click. You could easily have a heyday with this, putting in innuendos and connections to real life famous people. So if that's legit, I'd like to know about that. I wonder. I should question her interactive. Tag them in and say, is this what you meant? Who was John, <laughs> the one who was born in 1873? He was this huge naturalist and did a lot of exploration in the Amazon. I think there's a plant named after him. Or maybe a monkey. I forget. Mm. Mm-hmm. I believe he's the one who manifested and commissioned that gorgeous, gorgeous uh, garden in the conservatory. And Mrs. Drake looks after. Who is Malachi? He was a doctor of medicine and did a lot of research on icky skin diseases. 
Happily, I'm blessed with perfect skin. <laughs> oh, Letitia, there's, uh, um, that's Mrs. Drake. So her grandfather. Wow. Her grandfather was like, and this John character, the one that had the garden and created the conservatory, he was also the one who brought uh, Lulu home. And I'm surprised she didn't mention that. Okay. <laughs> Who was Rachel? She died in France during the war. I guess she worked for the French Resistance. Hmm. Tell me about Obadiah. He lived in the U.S. for most of his life and married this weird woman named Eustacia. <laughs> She's still alive and sometimes calls us. She's totally creepy. <laughs> Who was <sighs> Esther? Esther Pemberlin Rombo, oh. born in 1897 and died in 1951. Her friends called her Polly. Oh, I thought she was about to tell a very sad story with that sigh in the beginning. What did Nahum do? Nahum. He died in the flu epidemic. Oh. And then, of course, this Who was Alan? He was my grandfather, but I didn't know him because he died when I was little. I guess he was oh. nice. When you were little. Okay, I guess if it's 2004 right now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm still like 2022. I'm like, you should be a full woman by now. Okay, last family member to click. And then we can move on. Finally, darling, finally. What do you know about Letitia? Loves plants, hates noise. You can ask her about it. She's <laughs> usually <laughs> with <her> <laughs> You can ask her about it. <laughs> Loves plants, hates noise. You can ask her all about it. <laughs> oh, Jane. Jane's a funny one. I, she's so witty. I, th I don't think she means to be so humorous, but sometimes she says things that just... Oh, my gosh. Can we finally check this out? <gasps> oh, sorry, guys. I just saw her foot right there. Oops. Her, see her foot in the side there? I can't go over there or I'll move the screen, but that scared the crap out of me. Almost gave me a jump scare, but not quite. Looks like there are triangles. Blah, 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 blah. Take a really- Can't check that off yet. Can't check that off yet. Huh? <laughs> I thought I clicked them all. Adam. Who was Adam? Oh, uh, like he married Eve. No, we Duh. saw that one. No kidding. Girl, I, I can't don't back know out of these. About him. I think he was the son of Hugo, though, but I forget. We clicked all these. We clicked all these. Yeah. We clicked all these. Did I click Caroline? Who is Carolyn? Caroline was a chemist and helped identify the element yes. Lanthanum. Yes. Yes. I'm not sure what the element does. I think it's a heavy metal. I don't think I clicked Peter or John. Who was Peter? Mm, let's see. Oh, yeah, wood leg. He had okay. a wooden leg, and he was attacked by wolves once. That's yeah, yeah, all yeah, I yeah. remember. John, maybe? What do you know about John? He was an opera singer, oh, yeah, just like, like my, my mom. mom. He sang in some huh. Mozart operas, I think. I've clicked all of them, didn't I? Didn't I? Cassandra. Were Cassandra and Hector twins? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Cassandra was totally obsessed with lawn tennis and was one of the first people in England to have a court installed at her home. Hector was the first ball boy. Oh, I didn't I didn't click Cassandra. I didn't click Cassandra. Even though they're twins, I didn't click Cassandra. Let's see now, because I clicked Cassandra, we can check that off. I haven't done that yet. What? Is there more to look at? Interesting. Well, maybe, oh, uh, maybe I have to make some food for Lulu first. Okay. What's healthy for a bird? Do you mind if I make something? Go right ahead. Woohoo! Our first time making something. I know, I know Lulu doesn't eat it right now, but Polly want a cracker. Oops. Oh, that's like halfway in, halfway out. Uh, let's just make him something healthy wait let's look up bird diet. it would be rude to use it now okay we'll leave the room and we'll check it out okay <laughs> i just want to um 
look into bird diets. It's a healthy diet for parrots. Wide variety of foods. Deep colored vegetables. Oh my goodness. Nuts and seeds. Oh, no. Salami. Never feature parent avocado. Tea, coffee. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to put... Oh, I'm going to put... Oh. <laughs> I've got no space anymore. I just cleaned my desk, too, and I still don't have space. <gasps> Lulu. No avocado. Obviously no tea or coffee. Chocolate. Chocolate! <laughs> You're selling chocolate! <laughs> Potato. Oh, uncooked, but whatever. We're not even gonna touch it. Any kind of lunch meat or lunch meat that can be lethal to our furry friends. All right, I'm down with that. I'm down with the clown. Let's check it out. So, do you mind if I make something? Go right ahead. No avocado, so we'll give him some crackers and some lettuce that's fresh. And no potato or lunch meat or chocolate. Um mealworms. There! Let's put it on in. I hope we don't kill the bird. Let's hope that works. Crackers, what I put? Crackers, lettuce, and ew. And mealworms. Okay, now you start with that. That lion keeps blinking at me, and I don't like it. It's just so creepy. You guys can't see it because my face is right there, but... Okay, let's see if Cuckoo... <laughs> <laughs> let's see if Lulu... The time has come for closing books. Hello! How good, How good are, are you, you at giving, giving hints? hints? Tell your troubles to Lulu. Aww. Okay, well, I've got a lot going on here. What's the key to moving that gargoyle? Great, I found at the end of the secret passageway. Okay, what's up for the key? What's up to the key to moving? What's yeah. the key to moving that gargoyle so the secret passageway Linda told me about will open up? Corbin's the key. Corbin and his boat of charms. Boat of charms? To rhyme is divine. Okay. I'm going to put Corbin... Uh, boat of charms. Boat of whatever that means. Well, dang. Bye, bird. Ale, bye, bye. Ale, bye, bye. I, I think, I, th I think. Hello. I'm surprised she didn't want a cracker or a cracker, a cook, a treat. Cool. Lulu wanna. Lulu wanna. Wait, what does Nancy say? I guess we'll find out in a minute. Do you want a cookie? I don't think she says that. Why do we still need to hit about the bullseye? Maybe we were ahead of ourselves? Maybe I should try hitting it again. I don't have the ball anymore. Hmm. Any hint when it comes to the grid Shoot. I found at the end of that secret passageway? Hot marks the spot. Hot marks the spot. Two sides to every story. Bye, bird. Polly is a stupid bird. Polly is a stupid bird. I know what Lulu means. Hot. My Sagittarius. Oh, no, never mind. Because uh, on my hands, these are my... <laughs> never showing off my tattoos. But uh, this hand represents my uh, sun sign. So Taurus, uh, Venus fire symbol so it's an upside down triangle we're dealing with the right side up triangle which i have on this hand oh sorry and love because that's what taurus is all about um so my moon sign is sagittarius 
uh, planet is... Oh, I always get the Jupiter. I'm pretty sure it's Jupiter. I'm a little rusty after all these years. And I'm pretty sure that's Earth. Well, I'm certain. I wouldn't have got it tattooed if I didn't know. But Earth is the one facing upwards. And then it's all about peace, because that's what peace is all about. And then yin and yang, because they're both completely different, but they make me who I am. <laughs> oh, and the alien, because I'm just out of this world. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'm starting to think that these symbols on my own fingers. Who would have ever thought that I would use symbols from? But maybe earth and fire, then maybe I could try moving them around. There's got to be an easier oh. way to figure this out. There's got to be an easier, there's got to be an okay. easier way to figure this out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's take the slide. You're going to need a bigger bolt. You're going to need a bigger bolt. All right. Where's my clue for this? Oh, yeah. I still have it. Don't have it memorized yet. Wait, I don't have to go in there. <laughs> Woo! Time to go down the slide! <gasps> Woo! Hey, is that the chick? Is this, uh, Martha? Puchito in Omnia. She was the one. I think this is the Martha girl. The dress differently and. She doesn't look all that different, though. Hmm. And here's our friend Corbin. Boat of... Boat of Charms. Boat of Charms? What does that mean? Boat of Charms. Is one of these his plaques? No. Boat of Charms? The heck? What does she mean? Let's talk to... Oh, what time is it? Oh my! It's getting late. It's 9.07. At night. That's right. I said nights. Night time. Let's see if Mrs. Drake... She, I don't think she's still in, is she? Oh, and there's John's. Yeah. That's cool. It's all starting to come together now. Oh, she's yes. still... I <laughs> Run along! I had a feeling even at 9 o'clock she'd still be hanging out here with her plans. Um, this must be made, named after, and made after, like that lady right there in the mural. Must be the one, that lady that was loved by ever the pendulum that was loved by everyone in England. Oh! I would love to be Mrs. Drake. I'd love to have this big garden to tend to all the time, and maybe not, uh, Nonetheless, it'd be fun. All right, let's talk to Linda before we order some food and go to bed. Linda, tell me again how you opened up that secret passageway. Yeah. Not on your life. I've already said too much. I'll see you soon. Bye. Please. Is there anything new here? No, no. Love her cell phone. I want that cell phone in my life. <laughs> Maybe Jane has She's an She's probably sleeping. Oh, yeah, it's 9 o'clock. Sorry. Let's order some food. Oops. Cook! Oh, I need to call Hugh as well. Yeah, we haven't done that yet, have we, guys? Hi, this is Nancy Drew. I'd like to order some food. Sure, we've got some loop de loop bangers and mash, pinky and perky and a dog's eye, and they're all Robin Hood. All right, so we've had the chicken pot pie, we've had the turkey bangers and bangers mash. Bangers and mash. Rightio, Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder. Okay. Uh, okay. All right then, we'll come round and leave it at your Rory. Baked potato. I still don't know what baked potato means, or if he's just saying that. Hugh Penvalin here. Hello, Mr. Penvalin. This is Nancy Drew. I'm the one who's visiting Linda. You know, from the United States, across the pond. Yes, of course. Are you at Blackmore? Yes, I am, and I've talked to Linda. Good for you, because frankly, that's something I've been quite unable to do lately. These temper tantrums of hers make rational discourse well nigh impossible. He sounds just like his father, all I gotta say. Because remember we were playing the ghost game? on his father's computer that he created and everything. 
that man is, unless it was him that created it is it alan or his father either way if it was two different voices they sound identical these pendulum men but it was the same voice well then of course they sound the same <laughs> <sighs> How long have these tantrums been going on? Ever since I left for Italy. We'll be talking on the phone about the weather or Jane's lessons or something equally innocuous, and suddenly she'll be bellowing at me and slamming the phone down. Oh. Are you sure you didn't inadvertently say something, you know, argumentative? I promise you, these rages of hers are totally uncalled for and quite unbearable. I love her dearly, but she is making things very difficult. I understand that Mrs. Drake is your aunt. Oh, we've got a lot to aunt say. Patricia, we're not very close, however. She's always oh. been rather aloof, much more interested in being a pendulum than a person, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Does Linda get along with her? As far as I know, yes. Although I have caught my aunt eyeing Linda strangely at times. And of course, there's the six month habitation clause yes the what yes we've been over this according to the penvalin rules of inheritance the spouse of blackmore manor's current owner that would be linda since i'm the current owner the spouse of the current owner must reside in the manor for at least six months should mm -hmm. she or he leave the manor before six months is up mm -hmm. ownership of one half of the estate immediately passes to the next legal heir and that would be mrs drake correct you see and I was sus about her. I feel like we're still... Are we still a little sus about Mrs. Drake? I feel like I'm more sus about that Ethel that we know nothing about that always seems to come up behind us and give us a big frighten. I don't like that. Like I said, she needs to wear a bell. I met your daughter, Jane. Quite the bundle of energy, isn't she? <laughs> I get the feeling that she's a little lonely. A little. I'm sure she is. What with the private Very tutor lonely. instead of school and Linda being... Under the weather. And coming back to Blackmore no doubt reminds her of her real mother. Renee and I were divorced almost two years ago. Jane went into a bit of a tailspin for a while, but she's come to adore Linda. She's been calling her mummy since the day we were married. Aww. What do you know about the secret passageways here at Blackmore? Only that they're hundreds of years old and are undoubtedly dangerously decayed. Jane has been ordered to stay out of them. Not Fortunately, really. it's highly doubtful she'll even figure out how to get in them. So you do know how to get in them? <laughs> yeah, how Did does you she ever go in them? Yeah. I vaguely recall blundering into one when I was a child, but it was very dark and ended rather abruptly. And I found the whole experience to be rather unremarkable. Oh. When I told my father what I'd discovered, he merely shrugged, agreed that the passageways were dark, decrepit, and pointless, suggested that I stay out of them, and that was the end of it. Maybe your father knew more than... Oh, have you spent much time on your father's computer? So it is his father. His father's got a little bit of a higher pitch voice. Have you spent much time on your father's computer? The one that's in the library? I dare say I've never touched it. Mathematics, computer science, linguistics, all the things that fascinated my scholarly father bored me to tears. <laughs> he gave up on me quite early on. With Jane, however, it was a different story. What do you mean? From the day she was born, my father doted on her, far more than he ever doted on me. Mm. Read to her, bought her books, games. Truth be told, I was a bit jealous. He passed away when she was still a toddler, so it's unlikely she remembers all the attention he showered on her. But I do, and I still find it so out of character as to be mystifying. Huh. So he really is great. The, his father really loved Jane. Quite a lot. I don't think that's unusual though, but I guess being the son and noticing that he's giving more love to, more attention to Jane than he ever got, I guess that is a bit mystifying. Are you the one who hired Ethel to be Jane's tutor? No, that was my aunt's doing. Mrs. Drake? Yes, she absolutely insisted. She said the Bossonies had been tutoring the Penvalins for centuries and hmm. that I was duty bound to continue the tradition. She kept saying that it's what her brother would have wanted. Her brother being Alan, your father? Yes, and I must say, I've been quite pleased with Ethel. She's a fine <laughs> young woman, and Jane seems to enjoy her lessons, strange as they are. All very interesting. Because right now, the two biggest suspects, I guess, at the moment, for me anyways, I don't know how you guys are feeling, but 
well, initially was Mrs. Drake, and now I'm leaning more towards Ethel. But now that I know Mrs. Drake is the one that insisted Ethel be hired, hmm, maybe there's two culprits here. How long has she been Jane's tutor? Ever since we moved back here from the U.S. Oh, wow. Jane probably wishes she were in school, like the one she attended in New York. But she doesn't complain, although I would if I were her. Why? Well, Ooh. Ethel demands that Jane study history, obscure history, Penvalin history. They discuss events that even I, as a direct descendant, find inconsequential, to say nothing of deadly dull. Well, I hate to disagree with you, Q, uh, Mr. Penvalin, but I myself, I must say, would be in love with that setup. If I came from a family of, like, multiple generations, like I said in, I think, an earlier episode, I think episode two, Penvalin Portraits, or is that the first one? I can't remember. But I was so blown away and captivated by the, like, really rich history and the, the depth of longevity in this family and all the different uh, descendants and ancestors that have their own portraits and their own coat of arms. And <clears throat> I think when history is so openly displayed like that, and it's easy to see it's tangible uh, visually and just physically, I feel like, for me anyways, as a history nut, that just sends me over the edge. It's like a, a circus or a carnival or a wonderland, you know? Or Six Flags, like that's my amusement park. So I think if I were in that family, like I wasn't a Nancy Drew visiting, if I was Jane Penvalin, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? I would love all that studying. I would love, I'd be so proud to know every one of my family's members' birth dates and deaths and what they were significant for and everything else, all their accomplishments. I think that would be so cool. <sighs> I mean, I just love to be, to go to school in England for history, period. And then go and work for the royal family somewhere. That would be my ultimate dream. But And live somewhere in the British countryside. And oops. <laughs> Hope I'm not detaching this. Now that I don't have the pop socket, I could bring the mic closer. But I gotta watch over this cord. It looks alright. Maybe if I just raise it up a little bit. There we go. Alright, more questions to ask Mr. Hugh here. Because, of course, we haven't called him since, uh, ever. We haven't called him once. So let's get him caught up. What do you know about the Beast of Blackmore? Pure medieval fiction. The product of little minds in an era of dangerously little education. I have forbidden Ethel to so much as mention it to Jane. What did you hear about it? The man doing research in the library? Nigel Mukherjee? Another of my aunt's ideas. The fact that the Penvalins have never had a book written about them has been a perpetual source of social embarrassment for her. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool to have a book written on your family. Why doesn't Jane just help him out? Jane knows everything. How long has he had access to the library? For months now. Not that he's much of a bother. He's quiet as a church mouse, and he never seems to set foot out of the library. Yeah, he was recommended I by a that. friend, and he has assured us over and over that the book he publishes will cast only a positive light upon the Penvalin name. Although, come to think of it, I never Good have man. seen the contract he agreed to sign, which was to put that promise in writing. Interesting. Is that so, Hugh? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Nigel's moving up the sus list. Now we have three little sussies. Are you aware that those columns in the Great Hall can be opened up? The columns in the Great Hall open up? Why on earth would they do that? I'm not sure yet. And more to the point, what did the columns in the Great Hall have to do with Linda? I'm not sure about that either. My mother-in-law's counting on you to find out what's wrong with Linda. I'm counting on you. Linda's counting on you. I do hope you won't allow yourself to get distracted. It was nice talking Bye. to you. <laughs> it's an extremely busy time for me, so I apologize in advance if you call and I'm unavailable. I understand. Good. Cheerio. Well, that was a good little conversation. I'm glad we're caught up with Hugh. And when's our food going to get here? I'd like to know. Do I have to go hide somewhere? And a winner is I'm gonna hide in here. Blah blah blah. I think this is the same gargoyle that Colin is pictured in. Felicity! The door! The door! 
Be quiet, Lulu. People are trying to sleep. All right. That must be the food I ordered. Yeah. Nom, 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 Bangers nom, nom, nom. and mash. Huh? Uh, Looks like sausages to me. Tommy's cooking is beginning to grow on me. That'd mm. be so good. Oh, all those stuff. mashed potato and sausage and peas. I want all of that. Mm. I can just smell it now. Oh, British food is my favorite. British and Italian food. All right, let's call Mrs. Petrov too. Er, no, Pet what? Yeah, Mrs. <laughs> uh, I forgot her name. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Petrov. Hi, what's going on? Hi, what's going on? <laughs> she is so eager. <laughs> Did Linda say anything to you about finding a secret passageway? Uh, no. Linda told you she found a secret passageway? Yes. Do you think she wasn't telling the truth? Yeah. I don't know. Given her fragile state of mind, what's true and what she thinks is true may well be two different things, that's all. The good news is, I found a secret passageway too. Uh, so Linda wasn't yeah. imagining things. That's encouraging. The bad news is, I didn't see what Linda says she saw inside it. Oh, and we're back to square one. <laughs> yep, for doodle -doo. Goodbye, Mrs. Petrov. Take care. Well, at least we checked in. Uh, now, Red Wolf, again, has another little piece, a little uh, Easter egg for us as well. Um, she says that if we call Paliki, I'm pretty sure it's Paliki or it's Mrs. Petrov. I'm pretty sure Mrs. Vadis. If you keep up uh, a narrative with her, call her frequently. Apparently, she has something rather suspicious to say or interesting. The conversation gets interesting, apparently. So we are going to call her a bunch of times. Oh! Shh! I got goosebumps. Was that? Wait, 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 wait. Was that? Wait, Red Wolf. Was that what you were warning me about? Because that's very creepy. Unless it gets deeper than that. But that was very creepy. Oh, we're out of time. No. I hate when we're out of time. Oh, I got to reset that to 60 minutes. 65 minutes. Hour and five minutes for us, folks. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's very interesting. And she works with werewolves. She's like big in werewolves. That's her, that's her, uh. Her niche, that's her research point. So, I mean, that's creepy to think that she actually got real live werewolves up in her laboratory or wherever. Should we call Nick too? Or Ned? <laughs> Ned, Ned, Nettie Nickerson. Hello? Hi, Ned. Hey, what's the latest? Well, <sighs> Linda told me that her problem started right after she found this curse in a secret passageway. <laughs> curse. So what the curse say? She refused to tell me. Sounds to me like you'd better give finding that out your top priority. Oh, don't you worry, buddy boy. Apparently, each of Jane's We're ancestors had different coats of arms. Really? That's odd. You'd think there would be just one coat of arms for the whole family. Yeah. Believe me, the Pendleton family is nothing if not odd. Each coat of arms includes very distinct images and symbols. I wonder why they're so different. It's a long story, but I'm beginning to think that each Pendleton left behind a puzzle, and that his or her coat of arms mm. contains clues to solving that puzzle. Makes sense. I mean, in an oddball Pendlinian sort of way. It does, though. It does. Because they've all got their own... S oh, here's right here, right up here. Well, you guys, I can't put my cursor up there, but right above the fireplace there. Um... There's a lot of different symbols going on, you know, but even in the words, do you guys notice how at the beginning and end of the banner are like two little cross looking things? Huh? I think Linda may be turning into the beast of black. <laughs> Excuse me? See, I found this book that had information on lycanthropy in it. Lycanthropy? Werewolves? Basically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I called this expert, and from what she said, I really think Linda thinks she's been cursed to become the legendary Beast of Blackmoor. So it's all in her head. Right. Linda's symptoms are probably all psychosomatic. Probably? Uh... I mean, her symptoms are all psychosomatic. 
hopefully. So what does this beast of black boar do? I don't know that. And I'm kind of hoping I don't find out. That yeah. Two of us. I'll yeah. talk to you soon. Just be careful over there. We've seen enough stuff go on up in here. Okay. I need to... We need to go to bed. I'm scared to go to bed, though. 10 o'clock at night. <sighs> we might as well just sleep in until... Uh, after Jane has done her lessons. I don't want to go to bed. I'm so scared. I'm nervous. What the f... How about we just shake this stuff off and... Go to the mall. <laughs> what? what was that? <laughs> Why don't we just shake the stuff off and go to the mall? <laughs> what? Okay, that was great. Finally, not a scary dream. I was a little nervous, but the little frog dancing on all the coat of arms. What the hell? <laughs> But it's 3.15 again, AM, so I feel like we should go check things out. I feel like I want to check out those coat of arms, especially the last one. The frog ended at Alan. I'm so nervous, you guys. I'm so nervous. Okay, we're in this together. You and I both. A lot of shit usually happens at 3.15, so we need to be very careful. I'm very quiet and very, very still. So right over here, right, was where it ended. Weird. Pergamentum exit. I mean, we, we've used this before. I don't understand. Maybe Nancy's right that each, each uh, coat of arms has a secret, holds a secret. This one certainly does. Tells us how to get in the secret passageway. So you must have created it. All right, we need to get the hell out of here. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> and all of these were touched too. I don't think, I don't think the froggy hopped on these ones. That froggy moves so fast though. I just can't tell. <sighs> all right, we're going to bed. I don't like this. I don't like this. And a winner is Lulu. Oh, Lulu. <laughs> I hate that. Is there anything else? Sorry, I've been wondering if there's anything else I can throw at the thing. Maybe the egg. We don't need the egg anymore. Maybe I can throw the egg at the... <laughs> Aw, oh, this is laughing. Aw, <laughs> oh, no, it didn't work. Damn it. Ugh. Oh well. It's time for bed. I don't like this music. I don't like this music. I don't. Go to bed. Oh, Lulu, you're just really trying to get every last scare out of me today. I don't like it. I love how Nancy was scared from that dream, though. She's like, let's forget about this and go to the ball. And she's like, <gasps> Alright. Alright. Well, we'll end the episode here like usual uh yeah wow so so far kind of crazy i mean this episode wasn't wild in the way of events or you know things happening or getting like closer to a suspect or i mean a little bit closer to a suspect we do have still ethel mrs drake and now nigel because nigel's been here for months kind of just however he's like both hugh and i have noticed and you guys too probably he never leaves the library unless he goes home for the night. So I'm not sure if I think he's sus. I think it's interesting he's been here for a few months, though. And he promises to write only good things. So I don't know. I don't really think he's that sus. I thought he was at first. But I definitely think Mrs. Drake and Ethel have a, a lot of motive. A lot of reasons to be... Um, because if, if Mrs. Drake ends up getting half ownership of the house she'd have a lot more say whether Ethel stays or goes. And if Linda and Hugh are just kind of indifferent to Ethel's presence and her purpose, then 
you know, Mrs. Drake kind of has that extra leeway where she can say, well, I own half this house and she's going to stay here as long as I say and blah, blah, blah. And then, I mean, Hugh and Linda might not even stay if she if she got that, if she achieved that kind of ownership. So I, I don't know. I'm very mis I'm very curious. I am very curious what's going on in this place. And it does sound like Linda is turning into the black <laughs> more beast. So I love how Nancy said that. All right, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. I thank you guys so much for watching each and every one of these episodes and playing along with me and experiencing this journey uh, together. You and I both. And for some of y'all, this is a rehash of your childhood, just like me, which is so fabulous and such a thrilling blessing. Um, or for some of you, this is brand new. You never played before and you're playing for the first time with me. Um, at which you're probably very t uh, petrified after the past couple episodes. Uh, yeah, so am I. Still. <laughs> but uh, we still got lots more to go and we still have so many puzzles to solve. And the checklist. We haven't checked the checklist in a while. Um, nothing's really changed. I haven't done that yet. <sighs> we still haven't checked Jane's room thoroughly, which kind of sucks. I'm a little upset because I want my checklist to be clean out. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, this episode was more or less just um, cleaning up loose ends, you know, calling people, getting things, narratives out of the way, checking in with people, checking in with tasks. Other than that funny little dream we just had that didn't scare me but actually made me laugh <laughs> that was kind of refreshing <laughs> and a bit of a nice surprise all right folks i will see y'all in the next episode which will not be too far away and well, i'm sure we're going to actually open up a can of worms in the next episode because we've done a, a lot of practical work so far all right but until then toodles for now ta-ta <sighs> ciao see you next Howdy, folks. Did you like that video? Well, then why don't you go ahead and give that thumbs up a smackaroo. Don't want to miss out on the next episode? Give the subscribe button some love and make sure to turn your notifications on. That way I can give you a bell a ring, let you know that it is served. Still need more to chew on? Take a bite of my new YouTube Instagram account at TravyJ Space to keep up to date with the channel's inner workings and news of upcoming projects and episodes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.